force fields. Fields of force. Planes of pushing particles. Anxious atoms aligned by algorithms. What are they? Hi, Rick here, and in this video, we're looking briefly into the different types of force fields in use aboard most Star Trek starships. Now, I'm not a scientist, let alone a shield technician, so this is mostly speculation. Force fields are similar but different from a starship's deflector shields, which are raised to protect a vessel from energy and physical attacks, so I'll not be looking into how that technology works, as I'll be saving that for another video. The earliest known force fields from Starfleet, at least, date back to around the 2150s, when they were referred to as EM barriers, and still in development by the organisation, which at the time was humanity's exploratory arm and not a Federation Institute. This perhaps gives us some idea as to how they work, as the EM likely stands for electromagnetic, suggesting some form of magnetic containment field, inside which is a form of energy or particle that acts as the physical barrier. If it were simple particles contained within a magnetic field somehow, this might also offer an explanation as to how the force field can be varied in strength and serve a myriad of different purposes. The most frequently seen force fields are those used as containment, whether deployed in the junctions of a corridor or as cell doors to a brig or prison. These shields prevent matter and energy from passing through them and can deliver a slight shock, possibly electric in nature, to anyone who touches it. Most force fields are invisible when active unless something comes into contact with it. Then we can see the effects of particles manifesting around the point of pressure. Some variations, such as those favoured in the 2250s, were in fact visible. Now I'd speculate this was probably a safety feature to show that there was actually an invisible field of energy right in front of you, like putting a sticker on a glass door. Health and safety and all that. These sorts of barriers are also used in research labs to contain hazards. Most vessels have a network of force field emitters across all decks for the purpose of containing an individual, fire, hull breach or any number of hazards and many are erected automatically if the computer detects the need. Although under duress, as say in a firefight, the emergency containment system can take precious seconds to respond, especially if its emitters are damaged, so it has to calculate a new method of containment or dig up power reserves from somewhere, usually when power was already in demand. This is why manual activation is sometimes required. Such fields can be activated by anyone from most control panels, but only certain individuals of rank can lock or override them. These also tie into the structural integrity field of a starship, which can deploy these energy fields around the framework or supports of a ship to take pressure off certain areas. Rather painfully, if a force field activates across a person, they will usually receive severe burns and then be flung clear, but not actually be bisected or anything so gruesome. Another use of force fields can be seen in the shuttle bay and cargo bay doors, which have a low intensity energy barrier that allows for a shuttlecraft, solid matter under thrust, to pass through but prevents air from rushing into the void of space. Very low force fields are a common use in holograms to give them a physical presence. This force field is so low in power that it delivers negligible shocks but is also only one aspect of a hollow projector, which is a complex enough myriad of technologies to simulate different substances, such as the warmth of skin, the coldness of ice or the softness of a bed. So if a force field is an electromagnetically contained stream of particles, could this be sci-fi scienced into explaining the versatility of how they function? I guess? Imagine that the EM containment walls go up and then the space in between is flooded with particles. In real life research, the answer to force field technology seems to be plasma. The energised matter can be magnetically manipulated and even electrically conductive. So these fictional particles, or some maybe plasma, is then energised by the emitters and begins to vibrate more and more within its containment creating a dense wall of high energy points that are repelling anything that they touch. At low intensity, 
perhaps they're only strong enough to keep out air molecules, which are lazily drifting around waiting for a vacuum that they can abort. But the denser, more robust matter of, say, a shuttlecraft is solid enough to pass through this barrier with the added force generated by its impulse drive. At higher settings, even matter cannot pass through, creating the sort of containment fields that emergency systems and prison cells use. We've also seen that sometimes sustained energy weapons can disable force fields, and I'd speculate again that they're adding to the energy already present within the vibrating molecules within the force field. This increases the load on the emitters and they short out, deactivating the field. As for the use to reinforce the structural integrity of a starship itself, well, what if somehow you could get all the molecules moving in unison, thus applying force to the top and bottom, or even the sides of the shield, countering any force or pressure from the bulkhead it's reinforcing? There are a couple of holes in this idea though. Ignoring the notion that such accurate magnetic fields is as far as I know impossible, one is that if a force field suddenly dropped like that, then the contained energised atoms would surely explode in all directions with a burst of energy. Another problem is that such an energised field would be very hot. The friction of the molecules might exceed tolerable levels and turn a containment cell into an oven which would admittedly make brig time far more feared and shorter a lot shorter although this does tie into the notion that anyone too close to an activating force field would be seared but while researching for this video i found an analysis from a channel called up an atom that also points out how hot plasma would have to get to act as an effective repelling force i'll link it in the description but another issue is that plasma gives off a lot of light too, so a solid wall of plasma would be blindingly bright. For this reason I think Star Trek has taken its own approach to force field tech and uses some form of particle that would not reach these temperatures nor plasma's brilliance. This is my notion on how force fields would work in Star Trek, but like a lot of its science, it doesn't bear up under too close a scrutiny, but has just enough of an understanding to make for a feasible sounding technology. Just don't get me started on that murder machine that is the transporter. Thanks for watching this energised ion of a lore theory. I'm Rick and if you've got your own ideas on how this would all work, let me know and maybe I'll compile a list of ideas. Until the next video, thanks again for watching and goodbye.